Does electrical work have to be neat or pretty, or does it just have to be done to code? What's going on my friends? Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U, and today we're gonna to talk about this whole neat and workmanlike manner topic. So in the National Electrical Code, we have Article 110.12, and it talks about the mechanical execution of work and kind of how we're supposed to, I guess people interpret it, take pride in our work or how we're supposed to do things to be uh, professional. So let's kind of break into that because that's a lot. That's an argued about topic, right? So out in the field, there's a lot of people that are kind of of the mind that's like, just do it so that it's done right. Who cares what it looks like? Other people are like, no, like make it look like you're proud of what you do, take pride in your work. And a lot of people are kind of in the middle, like, well, yeah, both make sense. So some people are like, well, if I can do it fast and get it done right, you know, my, my either way, my boss isn't paying me more to make it pretty. But I mean, even that's kind of arguable. Um, it just kind of depends on the shop that you work for. So let's break into it a little bit. Just see what the National Electrical Code says first and foremost. So we're going to be going to 110. Dot 12. It says electrical equipment shall be installed in a neat and workmanlike manner. So there's three sections within that, but just that alone, what does that even mean? What is a workman? Workman, a man employed or skilled in some form of manual, mechanical, or industrial work. So employed or skilled. So if you have a skill in something, what does it even mean to be skilled? Having or showing skill, expert, or proficiency, requiring specialized ability or training. So as an electrician, I am trained to do work by the people that I'm around and whatever standard to the, whatever they do work by, that is all I know really until I get out there and start seeing more people and more experiences. Um, so it's not really saying like you have to do things pretty and aesthetically because pretty and aesthetically is a very, very relative term. But the term neat and workmanlike is specific in code. So to install electrical equipment, just to the minimums, not going over crazy, making sure all your Romex is stapled perfectly to me that's neat and workmanlike but some people just stapling it per code and who gives a shit what it looks like it's getting covered up at the wall that's also neat and workmanlike right uh, the neat is the part that i think we should look at so the definition of neat means free from dirt and disorder habitually clean and orderly it kind of seems like free from dirt and disorder means like if you make a mess, clean up your mess. It doesn't mean do everything evenly and perfectly and neatly and straight. It says marked by skill or ingenuity or precise and systematic. So there does kind of have this little bit of element of rather than just being somebody throwing shit up on a wall, you install it, you know, thinking about it orderly and systematically and cleaning it when you're done. And that's what professionalism is. So that's really all it says uh, under the 110.12 me mechanical execution of work. There's three different sections. There's A, B, and C. So it goes kind of more specifically for these three things. One of them is unused openings. And it says unused openings other than those intended for the operation of the equipment, those intended for mounting purposes, and those permitted as part of the design for listed equipment shall be closed to afford protection, substantially equipment to the wall of the equipment where metallic plugs or plates are used with non-metallic enclosures, they shall be recessed at least one quarter inch from the outer surface of the enclosure. So that's specifically for unused openings. So they're saying it's not neat and workmanlike if you leave openings in enclosures. Then we have the integrity of the electrical equipment and connections. Internal parts of electrical equipment, including bus bars, wire terminals, insulators, and other surfaces shall not be damaged or contaminated by foreign materials such as paint, plaster, cleaners, abrasives, or corrosive residues. So again, kind of just clean installs, not messy installs is what they're getting at. There shall be no damaged parts. This is another one you see a lot of times. Somebody like shorts out a receptacle and they blow up that terminal, but it's like, I'm just gonna shove it in the wall. That's not neat and workmanlike according to this for the integrity of the, the equipment. You can't damage stuff. There shall be no damaged parts that may adversely affect the safe operation or mechanical strength of the equipment, such as parts that are broken. So maybe that's a little relative because if it's not interfering with the safe operation, but it's damaged, it's really aesthetic damage. So it's not uh, the integrity of the electrical equipment. Another kind of relative thing there. And then we go on to cables and conductors. So cables and conductors installed exposed on the surfaces of ceilings and sidewalls shall be supported by the building structure in such a manner that the cables and conductors will not be damaged by normal building use. 
So it goes a little bit more in depth on that. But those are the three kind of cases that the NEC is, is really specific about even though it's kind of vague what it means, they just give us a little bit more information. Now, there is one thing that's interesting to note. They give us an informational note under the very beginning of 110.12 under the mechanical execution of work part, where they say, accepted industry practices are described in ANSI NECA 1-2015 for the standard for good workmanship in electrical construction and other ANSI approved installation standards. So I actually went spent $44 and bought that standard just to see what the standard says. So NECA 1-2015, good workmanship in electrical construction. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different sections. It's kind of a long thing, so I'm not gonna go through every single thing in here, but it's worth note that they say that this is what can be used as a standard that describes what is meant by installing equipment in a neat and workmanlike manner as required by the National Electrical Code section 110.12. So the first thing to look at is number two, standards for receiving, storing, and protecting equipment. Lets you know, like basically just don't damage stuff. This is how you should store things so they don't become damaged. Number three is what I'm gonna look at is, uh, this is general requirements. So this kind of applies to all uh, work. Doesn't matter if it's conduit, wire, anything like that. It says, Good workmanship shall be apparent in the installation of all electrical materials and equipment. Equipment shall be level, plumb, and true with the structure and other equipment, also in a horizontal or vertical position as intended. So no unlevel conduit runs. Everything needs to be level, essentially. Uh, B, all materials shall be firmly secured in place, adequately supported, and permanent. Uh, materials embedded in concrete or masonry or otherwise part of the structure are considered sufficiently supported. C, all hardware fittings and accessories shall be of type designed, intended, and appropriate for use and complement the items with which they are used. D, all materials and equipment including hangers, supports, fasteners, or fittings, and accessories shall be corrosion protection suitable for the atmosphere in which they're installed, whether located indoors or outdoors. Care shall be taken during the installation to ensure the integrity of corrosion protection. Damaged corrosion protection shall be repaired during or after installation. E, all screws, bolts, nuts, clamps, fittings, or other fastening devices shall be made up tight in accordance with manufacturers and or listing instructions. So this is again, you gotta install stuff to the listing or to the manufacturer's instructions. F, plans and specifications shall be carefully followed when installing equipment. Uh, then we have a little bit more specific stuff. So there is a section for anchors and fasteners. Then there's hangers and supports have their own section. Outlet boxes have one. So one example in outlet boxes is outlet and device boxes shall be secured and rigidly attached or supported plumb level and true. So it's like just installing an outlet box is just installing and installing it in a neat and workmanlike manner is to make sure that it's level and plumb and everything is straight and there's no um, you know, damage or anything like that to it. So if you're smashing in one of those single gang blue boxes and you're wiring a house and you smash the box and it's cracked, get a new box is essentially what they're saying. We keep going on, there's stuff about junction and pull boxes. It talks about covers, it talks about um, uh, the size and conductors and number of bends in the raceway uh, should all be done according to code. Um, goes a little bit more into raceways and there's a whole bunch of different things in here. It's kind of an interesting manual to look through. Um, talks about wire and cable, it talks about mounting equipment. So all of these things is kind of like don't damage anything, make sure everything looks good. It looks like, you know, it's all level and straight. And that's kind of the whole point. When you're installing something, make it look like a professional did it. Don't make it look like a handyman did it. And I'm not crapping on handymen. I'm simply saying that like a handyman is not an electrician. So a lot of handymen out there try to do electrical work and you can tell as an electrician walking up right away, whoa, somebody's husband just wired that. It's not at all right, it's completely wrong. So the rightness or wrongness as the uh, code, you know, as a standard for at least as a minimum, things have to be installed correctly. Um, but beyond that, actually taking a lot of care to make sure that there's no damage to anything that you're installing, making sure things are done straight, um, and whatever you consider neat to be, but you know, like not dirty, kind of clean, make it look like a professional did it. So here's my, here's my thoughts on the whole thing. Again, this is my opinion. Get your fingers ready. I'm sure you're ready to give me your opinions too. <laughs> Please leave them below. Uh, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button though first before you scathe me with your comments. Uh, number one, we all need to be installing to the code as the minimum standard. Code is a minimum. 
There is absolutely nothing wrong with going over, above, and beyond and adding more straps to a run if you think it looks neater or you know doing things that are kind of like maybe upsizing your conductors. Maybe not during COVID because everything's so expensive, but you get what I'm saying. You can kind of go above and beyond and there's nothing wrong with that while it may be a little bit more expensive and time consuming. You can do it. You just need to use this as a minimum. So does that mean you can do sloppy work that doesn't look good? Yeah, I mean, it does. As long as it's done right, you know, and, and again, this, this ANSI manual is not code. It's a recommended thing for you to read to maybe understand what is intended by the word uh, workmanship or neat and workmanlike manner, but this is not code. So you don't have to really install things, but uh, if it's not in the code specifically for that definition, kind of up in the air. So I think always trying to educate yourself on what all of the intent is behind code is also a very wise idea. And if they are saying that there's these standards that are recommended that we use within the industry, I think that it's okay to do that and try to adopt those standards. The next thing to consider is what are people going to think of your stuff? And by people, I mean, let's look first at just other electricians. If another electrician comes in after you, are they going to look at your stuff and be like, holy hell, who did you hire? Like, really, did you get a plumber to do this? Because this is, this is not an electrician. If people can say that about your work, I think it's worth evaluating your work and evaluating whether or not you're actually a professional or if you're just kind of an installer out there trying to whip stuff up on a wall and get paid. So uh, as a professional in this trade, as a professional in any trade, I think you need to be constantly pushing the boundaries and uh, honing your craft and getting better and better and always trying to impress yourself. That's just my opinion though, and that's just how I like to do things. Doesn't mean that's how you have to do them. But other people other than electricians, inspectors. If an inspector comes out onto a job and sees just sloppy crap work, although you know it might be technically right, they're gonna look way closer than somebody that they know the company has a, a, an excellent you know, history of like doing really great work, really clean, neat, everything is thought out. An inspector can just walk in and be like, wow, they thought of everything. This is great. So they're not gonna have such a crucial eye on all of your stuff that they might if they walk in and it looks like you know, a bunch of 12 year old kids wired to place. So again, that's just a consideration, something to think about. Whether you do it or not, it's up to you. Like, all of this is up to you, really, how you do work and whatever your standards are, and that's fine. Um, but the last thing to think about too with, uh, with the, the people, at least, what people think of your stuff is the customers, right? So like if a customer is gonna pay $3,000 for you to go build a service, what are they paying for for that $3,000? When they go out there and look at it, are they gonna be like, bro, there's no way I'm paying you $3,000 for that dog shit right there. Look at my neighbor's house, that's clean. That's super clean over there. That's $3,000. This is like $800. What are you even talking about? That looks like crap. So you have to think about the aesthetic. You have to think about what you're actually charging people for. And if you're doing clean stuff and your stuff looks like better than everybody else around, it's easier to justify your pricing when you charge a customer that. So again, that's just my opinion. The last thing that I think is is kind of a good, again, an opinion, but a good thing to do is always put your signature on stuff. I don't mean literally go in and like write your signature on stuff. If that's what you want your mark to be, that's fine. But I think kind of putting your own little twist on things, as long as you're doing things to code and they're done well, some people like to tape, uh, solidly tape a conductor. Some people like to put their marks at a certain point so that everything lines up. Some people like to do this like weird spiral thing when they're taping conductors in everything that you do, how you fold conductors in boxes, how much wire you leave, whether or not everything is perfect and straight. When you do conduit runs, maybe you do these weird little offsets a certain way that you just like how that looks. So you do it all the time. And when somebody looks at it, they're like, Oh, whoa, that's so cool. It's clean. I think going above and beyond is an appropriate thing. As you go through your career as a professional, as a tradesman, as an electrician, I think it's really important that you're always pushing your boundaries and always impressing yourself. So while you may have an electrician come in and say your stuff looks like crap, but you think that's the best work you've ever done, it's really up to you. You're the one you know, with the liability on it, but always just be pushing your boundaries and trying to increase your value, increase your knowledge, get better at what you're doing. Otherwise, why are you even doing this? You know, go do something that you are passionate about maybe. Um, so again, those are just my opinions. 
share yours as I'm sure you will. Thank you guys so much for your constant support. Make sure that you like the video. If you liked the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps me out to keep putting content out like this for you guys, for you to freely consume at your leisure. Hit the little notification bell, lets you know every time I have a uh, episode out. Um, also, make sure that you go to the Discord group, join the Facebook group if you're more into the Facebook thing, or if you're on Reddit all the time, we have a subreddit, r forward slash electrician. Drake, just put it on, on the thing. I don't know, it's electrician you, we got a subreddit. So go over there, post some stuff that you find, and, and uh, it's something that eventually, probably in the next few months, I'm gonna start doing reaction videos for, or you know, go over people's posts and just see what I think about it for any of you that care. Anyways, enough babbling, love you crazy people. I'll see you soon. Best Cant Music and Video.